let's go ahead and take our sketches to the next step now. We're going to look at these features here, extrude, revolved boss, swept, as well as loft. For starters, let's start with extrude. Okay, to go ahead and do that, we have to either create a sketch first and then apply the feature to it, or go ahead and start the feature. And since no sketch will be activated, currently selected, or already created, we'll have to create the sketch then. So let's try that first. I'll go ahead and start the feature. Automatically takes us into this sketch here. And then all we really need to do is create a closed feature. So I'll go ahead and create a circle here. I'll place it right on the origin, like so. Once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and exit the sketch. And since I started with the feature, it takes me back to the feature, which is the extrude here. I can go ahead and use this 3D line here and extend it out a bit. Now, our options over here on the left-hand side are from, currently by default, SOLIDWORKS will create the extrude from the sketch plane that we drew on top of. We can also start from another surface or face, vertex, or even offset it. You can go ahead and change the distance here. So it starts extruding from this offset. I'll go ahead and just leave it at the default of the sketch plane. These next options here for direction 1 and direction 2, I'll go ahead and start by making it mid-plane first. Notice my direction 2 disappears. That basically puts the plane that we drew our geometry on and it extrudes it from both sides equivalently. So if I extend one side, the other side extends out. It gives a lot of control and flexibility if you're going to have a symmetric design like this. I'll go ahead and put it back to blind. And blind basically means that we are going to have to specify an exact distance. So we can go ahead and increase the distance here as needed stretched out just to kind of eyeball it if you need it to and then we can also create a direction too so if one direction needed to extrude very far out and you need the other one to extrude a different distance there's also several other options in here that we can't actually create just yet but they are up to the vertex up to another surface offset from a surface so if there was another surface here it would go ahead and extrude all the way up to that surface and then come back a little bit because it would be offset from the surface. We can also do it up to a body as well. We also have another option here. If you hover over it, it says draft on or off. We can go ahead and select this and you can see we can create a draft. But typically we'll want to go ahead and just leave the extrude by itself as one single feature. And there's also a draft feature over here on this section. So you would apply a draft after. So that way you're not confusing too many features at once. You can also apply a thin feature, which would hollow it out a little bit. But again, we'll look at that and as well as the draft feature a little bit more later. For now, we'll go ahead and exit out of this. We'll keep this geometry here. And now we're going to look at the loft. Or how about before the loft, we go ahead and look at revolved since we're already on this sketch plane here. So once we're done with the sketch, we can still exit out of it and we can keep it and we were working on the front plane. I'll go ahead and make sure we are normal too. I can zoom out a bit. I will create one more sketch on this plane. So we'll go ahead and create a sketch. As you can see, I'm actively in a sketch. Don't worry about these blue lines here. It doesn't mean I have to sketch inside of that. I can go ahead and stretch these out like so. These are just for guidance and we know where we're working at. I'll go ahead and just create a simple line that goes down like so. It doesn't necessarily need to be perfect, but if we wanted to create a horizontal or vertical relationship, we could go ahead and select that when we're inside of our sketch and we can create a relationship. I'll go ahead and just make it vertical. I'll escape one more time. I'll put it normal. And now let's go ahead and go back to our features. We're going to go ahead and activate revolved. And now we have an option here since it had nothing selected that we need to select a plane on which to sketch the feature cross section or an existing sketch to use for this feature. Well, if you notice, we have nothing over here on the left hand side to select. We could come over here and start selecting options or we could pull down this and we can highlight from the tree, which is very convenient. We can choose this sketch here. And the first thing we are asked is the axis of rotation. We can go ahead and select this line here that we created. And now you notice we have this nice donut shape here. This is basically the profile that we're sending around this curve. So we can go ahead and just like before, blind is basically extending it out to a distance. 
we have 360 currently we can go ahead and adjust that a bit let's go ahead and just type in 90 you can see there's a quarter of a donut right there we can go ahead and adjust that and put it to mid plane so it's 45 degrees on both sides just like before we can go ahead and apply a thin feature which kind of hollows it out a little bit and we have the same options as before we can offset it from a surface we can extend it up to a surface as well as to a vertex all right i'll go ahead and exit out of that and not accept it i'm gonna highlight this line here we'll go ahead and delete it as well just to hit the delete key and select it from the tree on the left side your feature manager i'll accept that and the next thing we're going to do now is the loft itself now what the loft needs as you can see it's a profile and some curves that we're going to look at so i'll go ahead and exit out of that and what the loft will be doing is it's going to connect let me go ahead and keep this feature turned on you can select it from here and you can hit show so that way it stays there. It's going to extend this geometry here and it's going to extend it out to a different type of geometry. So it's similar to an extrude except one end can be one shape and the other end can be something else. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a circular feature that extends completely out just like the extrude. So it gives a little more control and variety over the shapes that you're about to create. So in order to do so, the loft requires two sketches on different planes. So one way to create a plane an additional plane is to select your plane you can go to reference geometry and create a plane or a shortcut is you can select your plane once hold down control and as you can see when my mouse has that up and down left and right arrow I can go ahead and click and I can drag it out I can place it as necessary it's a handy little trick to create a plane quickly I can go ahead and accept where it's at by default I'll go ahead and select that plane make sure it's selected I'll use my will here to select sketch. If not, if you don't have that on your will, you can go ahead and select it and select sketch. I'll go ahead and just do that one more time. I'll discard any changes. Sketch, create a sketch. I'll make sure that I am normal to it. And then I will create a rectangle on this side. Just like so. I'll go ahead and accept, accept that, exit out the sketch. And as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this region here to this region over here. But before I do that, let's create some guide curves before we even know exactly what they are. Normally, if you were to connect this, it's gonna connect the straight feature. Well, how about we go ahead and just look at that real quick. We'll go ahead and create a feature. We'll create a loft. I have to select two profiles to connect. So one will be this square here, but I'm gonna go ahead and select them from this tree. We have one and two. I'll go ahead and just accept this for now. As you can see, it went ahead and created this shape here. Connect to the circle, straight out to the rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that feature and let's provide some guide curves. So what I'll do is I'll make sure this plane here is visible. So the, what the guide curves are gonna do is they're gonna guide the lines as it's connecting. So maybe I want it to dip in a bit and then dip back out and not actually create that straight line like it did before. So I'll go ahead and make sure to create a sketch here. I'll create a spline and the spline I will just draw from here to here. I'll go ahead and hit escape to finish that spline. I'll create one more and I will create it from here to here. Hit escape to accept that spline and now notice we didn't exactly make any changes. It's straight. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a relationship to make sure that this point here pierces through this actual line of the other plane. So it's kind of like making a coincident mark, but when 3D sketches, it's a little bit different. So I'll go ahead and exit out of that sketch to make sure everything's okay. I'll select that point. Let me actually go back into that sketch so I'm not selecting sketches themselves. We can go ahead and edit it here. I'll pick this point, hold down control and select that line there. And I'll choose Pierce as my relationship. As you can see now it is hitting that line there. Next, I would do the same thing here. I'll select this point, hold down control, select the other point, and choose Make Pierce. Can accept those changes. I'll do the same thing to these bottom two points here. Select once, select again, Pierce. Select once, hold down control, select again, and Make Pierce. Now we can go ahead and edit this shape as well. If I select the line, I get these bars, well, handles here to move a bit can adjust this side as well. I can increase the influence that this line has on the shape. You can go ahead and create one that comes in 
like so. It could be any sort of funky shape that you want to make. We'll go ahead and play around with this side as well. We'll dip it in a bit. We'll dip this one out a bit maybe. Just kind of make it look a little bit odd, exaggerate it so we can see what's happening. I'll go ahead and exit that sketch there. As you can see, I have this funny little shape that kind of comes up and back down. Now let's go ahead and create loft one more time. I'll go ahead and make sure to select my profiles. I'm going to select them from the tree here to make sure I'm choosing the right ones. There's the first one. Here's the second one. As you can see, there's the shape that we had before, but we're trying to add some more variety and control to our shape. So make sure to go to guide curves. We can select this first curve and hit the checkbox. So you can see it provides that curve, but it does it to both sides here. But for us, we actually created a second curve here. So we can also apply that second curve to the shape. I'll go ahead and select that and hit OK. And there's that shape that we made. So it's guiding the loft and as it goes across. But notice also on this side here, we didn't necessarily give guide curves for this left and right, only that top and bottom of the shape. I'll go ahead and hit Escape so we can see what it looks like. And I'll turn off these planes. You go ahead and select it. Click hide, select it, hit hide, left click and hit hide. And here's our shape like so. Now our last feature to look at is going to be the swept boss. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new sketch. We can do that right here, create new, or we can go to file and new. Make sure to have a part. Well, I'm gonna create a new sketch in a different part so that way we don't have to delete that loft and delete all the sketches out. I'll go ahead and select any plane. This one looks good to me. I will create a sketch. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll create a straight line like so. I'll go ahead and accept that. Looks good to me. And then what I'll do is I'll create something simple like this. I'm going to make sure to use the three points or I'll just use this tangent one here. I'll select the point. I'll pull out a bit and put a point there. Make sure to have a line. Pull down just a bit. And that looks good to me. I'll go ahead and exit out of the line. Just drag that down just a little bit. And I made kind of like a candy cane shape. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a profile and something to send the curve along. So the next thing we need to do is create a circle shape or any type of geometry right on the tip of this point and then send it along this curve to create a three dimensional shape. So let's go ahead and create a plane that's perpendicular to this. Well, we can do that by creating a geometry after I exit out of this sketch. We see reference geometry here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that down. And again, we're going to create a plane kind of like we did just before, except we're not going to drag a plane out. If we wanted to, let's go ahead and exit out of that for a second. We could find a perpendicular plane right here and we could create a sketch right there. But we're going to try and place our sketch right at the tip of that point. So that's why we're going to create a new plane and reference geometry. We'll go ahead and select one point. As you can see, that's right on the plane that the current sketch is on. So then we're going to create a second point. And the point we're going to do is we're going to pick that line there. Make sure it's perpendicular to our plane. And that's exactly where we want to sketch. I'll go ahead and accept that. We'll make sure this sketch is highlighted. We'll create a sketch. We can go ahead and put a circle right on that tip point. Go ahead. We can also make sure that we're normal to it so you can see this is our curve that we're going to go send this circle along. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and hit escape. We can hit this view here and we can turn it to isometric just so we can get a better look. And let's turn off that plane too just so we can see it a little bit better. All right, now let's go ahead and activate our feature. This first feature here is what we're going to select. That's the profile. We'll go ahead and select that circle. Next, you see we're already in the pink zone, and this is the path that we're going to send it along. It has nice little shapes here to, to depict what we're going to select. Okay, so from there, we can go ahead and select this shape here. And there you go. We have a nice candy cane or a little loop hose that we may want to use. We can go ahead and apply more features here. The tan, uh, tangency features really won't provide much. We can do a thin feature, which will actually hollow it out a bit. We can zoom in and see how we turn that on and off. We can't really tell too much. We'll go ahead and accept that and see what it looks like. And there's the shape that we made. So starting with some basic 2D sketches, 
combined with these features here, we can create some amazing 3D geometry.